Jack meets Jill. Jack thinks Jill is cute. Jill doesn't think Jack is so bad either. That's attraction, the first phase of falling in love. Jack and Jill's brains light up in an area right above the eyes called the orbitofrontal cortex, which is involved in decision-making and emotional processing. But for Jack and Jill to move up that hill to the next phase, lust, the chemistry has to be right, and hormones need to be high. For single men like Jack, that won't be a problem, because testosterone levels tend to run high. Jack will be most infatuated with Jill about 12 days into her menstrual cycle, because her estrogen levels are elevated. That's right around ovulation, a time when men find women most attractive. Jack also thinks Jill smells as sweet as roses and tastes like candy when kissed. That's because smell and taste relay information about a person's immune system. It's nature's way of ensuring we hook up with those whom we're most likely to have healthy babies. But Jill, like every other woman, is more sensitive to taste than Jack. But if Jill goes on the pill, that sensitivity fades. Either way, a tip for Jack, don't forget the breath mints. If Jack and Jill do make it up that hill, things move to the next phase, love. The chemistry in the brain is fired up at this point, and they can't stop thinking about each other. In their brains, levels of three neurotransmitters surge, lighting up new pathways. One is dopamine, which controls pleasure and reward. Another is epinephrine, which is involved in the fight or flight response. It's what makes Jack's hands sweat and Jill's heart race. The third neurotransmitter is serotonin, which is associated with mood, sexual desire, appetite, sleep, memory, and learning. Jack and Jill's serotonin levels are similar to patients with obsessive compulsive disorder. That's why they have butterflies in their stomachs and experience extreme moods. But after Jack and Jill fall in love, things could change. They could fall down that hill, because at some point, those neurotransmitter levels descend. That's when Jack and Jill have to make a decision. Commit or break up. Fortunately, this story has a happy ending. Jill says yes, and they enter a committed, long-term relationship. Their hormones tone down, but shared memories and experiences take the place of thundering neurotransmitters. Jack and Jill live happily ever after, but if you don't have a lover, there is a way to enjoy a dopamine high. Eat chocolate. Perhaps that's why it's a given on Valentine's Day.